welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin MacLeod, Plate Mail Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Buckner. I'm the primary dungeon master for Knights of Roleplay and Adventuring Podcast. This session is being recorded over Zoom. As our adventure begins, it is Stardate 1211.80. After a recent attack by the warmongering Niyogi, life has returned to normal on the Rock of Brawl. You're all enjoying an evening meal at the Laughing Beholder Tavern. Arvine, you suddenly get a vision from your goddess Mayheen. Your perception of the patrons in the tavern is washed away and replaced with a towering futuristic metropolis that you recognize as Tamilar, city of the ancients on the planet Dakur. Your vision, uh, much like a dream, skips from one scene to the next. You see a blue thrycreen mob boss putting out a bounty. Then you see an armored bounty hunter capturing a young woman. Then you see a large building in the city followed by a holding cell containing the young woman. You have a sense that this woman is important and must be rescued. The vision ends. Luigi says, Hey, Avin, you okay over there? You were kind of staring off into space for a minute. Um, Avin kind of shakes her head and goes, "Um, Yeah, yeah, I think I'm just kind of daydreaming a bit. Sorry, Luigi. That's okay. Welcome to jail. Uh, That's Another rail oh, strike. So careful. Uh, What's that? Another rail strikes. Yeah, bring me another rail. I'll mm-hmm. take yes. another yeah. one also. He's a telekinetic eye stock to <laughs> send some send some ales over. Arvine kind of shares like a meaningful glance, like makes makes eye contact with Matisse at least, and kind of you know, raises an eyebrow. Uh, Matisse one. would probably reason to that. Re- yeah, uh, read into that to understand what it was that happened, and kind of turn to the others and say that. Uh, we're somewhere a little more private. Uh, there's something else I need to discuss with you guys. Okay. Uh, Until I mean, is, time, let's merry make and have. Are, are we? Yeah, that sounds good. Are Greg, we in a, Greg, like a more uh, private? Can you, put your, can you put your microphone down, Greg? Are there we in go. a more <laughs> private corner of the Laughing Beholder, or are we kind of out where a lot of people could hear what we're talking about? Uh, well, I mean, it's loud enough in there, generally speaking, that you could probably talk and not have people hear what you're, or understand what you're saying. Okay. So I, kind of I, to... I don't want to be hearing about any of your private stuff there. I mean, if there's something you need to go take care of, go it's do not... it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like roll my eyes at, at Strax. It's like, no, it's, it's another vision. Oh. So yeah, I okay, kind of... So. Yeah, Sorry, I, I was wrong. You haven't had enough ale. <laughs> Matisse buys uh, Strax another strangely. beer <laughs> because so, her armor is so spectacular she's just beside herself so I kind of <laughs> turn to, to the others and say I, I saw um, a place where, where Matisse and I have been before uh, there's a very futuristic planet called Dakor with a, a city called Tamalar city of the ancients um and I saw a vision of a blue thry queen. Am I pronouncing that right, DM? Yes. Uh, a bounty hunter. I, I don't know, uh, Matisse, if that rings any bells from your past. Um, but basically, uh, set a bounty, an armored bounty hunter took it and captured some young woman, and, and I know where she's being held. And it, it, I have the sense that we really need to, to rescue her. I think she's going to end up being important to us in the long run. Right, so we need to rescue this bounty from the bounty hunters, you're saying? That is correct. Uh, do we get to keep the bounty? I doubt it. Although, <sighs> <laughs> the facility... I can't you forgot place. I mean, if, if it's a facility that has other loot in it, then I don't know what you might That's be able to problem. loot, Strax. Like you know, it's... <laughs> I'm it's sure a, Strax, it's a futuristic be... city, so there might be some cool things in general that you haven't seen. Uh, I don't know where you guys have traveled uh, in, in all of your life. Uh, I'll admit so to being far. curious, I yeah. suppose. I'm sure yeah. Strax, it'll be worth your while. 
Yeah. So, Greg. I don't know. Our last couple were kind of a bust. <laughs> Greg, the uh, um, when 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 Matisse in her previous life was Alec. Greg is f- fighting with his Pause headset. For Hang on. Pause for technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah. uh, Greg, can you hear me? Yeah, you can. Okay. So, um, when when Arvine mentions a blue thrycreen, the when when Matisse in her in her previous life when she was Alec, and she was hired uh, to hunt down Arvine. Okay, a blue thrycreen was the person who hired Alec, who hired your character to go after Arvine. So that's uh, out of character. That's Milfoil, I believe. Milfoil? Isn't that like a Milfoil? kind of... I don't... I, I, when I, unless I'm missing something, when I read through your character history, I did not see a name for the person who hired Alec. No, I didn't. I didn't give one. I mm. left. It, I left some of those things open. I think. No, you you did give a name because it was like in the little separate thing that we put for you at the very end of it. Oh. Yeah. Me- it's been meal a while foil. I've, I've read the story. Me- meal foil, but that we the, meal foil at least as far as Arvine's perspective didn't have a race, and Greg didn't mention a race. So. No. Okay. There's just so this, what, what are this Sorry, dude that uh, comes out of nowhere. At the time, remember the Thry Queen. Hmm. Chris, what's that? The Thry Queen race. What about it? What are they? Like they bug are creatures, or they are essentially um, they are essentially a praying mantis. Yeah, I got a picture mm. up here. If you want to let me share it out. Uh, no sharing from you, John. Ah, uh, I promise not to abuse it this time. Those privileges have been taken away forever. Oh, it's so mean. <laughs> uh, here, yeah, uh, fine. I'll post they're like an insectoid, um, praying mantis, uh, humanoid, somewhat humanoid <laughs> uh, race. Uh, there's a link to a picture in chat. Okay. Matisse says, I have not heard that name in a long time, and there's good reason why. What name I just told you about a, a Thry Queen is this? Is this your old boss, Matisse? Um, he he went by many names, but I called him Milfoil because that was uh, what he had given me as his code, and we always spoke in code, so he didn't really have my real name, but. Um, I was easily identifiable, I guess you would say. Okay. Right. So obviously it's probably not great that I would be going back to this place with the person who originally hired you to capture me. So, wait, let me get this um, straight. We're, we're going after a bounty uh, uh, being captured by Matisse's pre- uh, previous Matisse's previous boss. Some, somebody that he hired, yes. Oh no! Previous no, there was an there was there was an armored bounty Ireland. hunter who actually brought her in, but it was I saw the Thry Queen. He, he's the one who hired the bounty hunter who brought this woman in that we need to rescue. So, as with anything, uh, Rex, there's always yep. t- a strings attached. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, also so, keep in keep in mind that that if somebody puts out a bounty, you could have ten bounty hunters going after the same person. Mm-hmm. So so. You know, I, I'm not trying to split hairs, but like the the person you're saying we get you, to fight ten bounties. The, the person that you saw, that Arvine saw in her vision cape, was um, you're assuming was the person who captured her. It doesn't mean that the Thrycreen specifically hired that one person to go get her. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's a small detail, but again, like mm-hmm. what your assumption is is that that person put out a bounty. Could have been a thousand people that basically picked up the bounty and tried to go get her, but you happen to see the vision of the person that got her. Okay. So that so that, that that bounty hunter was not necessarily specifically hired to do that. Okay. It was just one of many. Just like so, just like there was probably multiple bounty hunters that were going after you when Alec was going after you. Yep. Well, 
Do we want to get the captain involved in this, or do we want to see if we can borrow our little ship? I think we should run it by him and see what he thinks. Uh, you always yeah. think that. You're, you're, like, tied to his hip. Jeez. Bury him already. Oh, I like not having to have Janie burn all her spells to drive us somewhere otherwise. Uh, he to likes to burn things. <laughs> yes, we do uh, know But that. I want you to be able to burn things but where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows what resources we might need in this uh, place that we're going to. I kind of I guess. Matisse and go, do, do you remember anything else about the facility or the you know, the places where Neilfoil would have worked out of? Like, I, I, I know generally where we're going. I, I don't know what exactly we were getting into other than I saw this person in a cell. So I know where we it need to go to like get her free. It feels like lifetimes ago to me, but maybe my memory when I actually see the place might jog some some feelings for me. Okay. But as of right now, I really can't say for sure. Hmm. Uh, uh, let's see, Chris, just to make sure I'm not leaping to conclusions here. Do I know where in the city, like what, what building, like where to go in the building to find this woman in the cell? How, how specific you would, is my intuition? You would, you would recognize the building if you saw it. Uh, you don't know where the building is, but you would you would assume that based on your past visions that you would have a feeling that would draw you in the direction of the building. Okay. You have no reason to think that once you're in the building that you will know exactly where she is. But again, you may have some kind of like a like a dowsing rod kind of a feeling as to the general mm-hmm. direction of where she okay. might be. You know, okay. some, sometimes, you know, the way that Mayahine communicates with you is a little more specific and it's a little more vague. Generally speaking, it tends to be vague. Okay. What? Vision's vague? No. <laughs> <laughs> and you also know that, well, I mean, you, you estimate that, that the trip would probably take about um, two months to get there. Mm, that's going to be a hard sell for Captain Brown. Uh, we won't know unless we tell him, but... Uh, I'll let you do yeah. the talking, then, but yeah. you usually do anyway. Okay. <laughs> Arvine just ignores his snark. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, I mean, if the rest of you guys are game for a longer adventure, then I'd say we go tomorrow morning and tell Brown. Are we having lunch or dinner, Chris? Is dinner. it evening? Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's go talk to Brown in the morning and see what he thinks. Yeah, good. I can continue to get drunk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, the night passes uneventfully. <laughs> get you drunk. Mm-hmm. I get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I get drunk. <clears throat> Do There's I play a girl with there. Luigi? I want to do her. Do I play with Luigi. <laughs> Who roll? Does anyone have to roll for stamina? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Girl, Whoa. put me to bed. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, guys. And we already we already went there. <laughs> well, stamina meaning that people don't pass out from drinking so much. Oh. Ah, okay. Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll go with that. Oh, <laughs> I thought so we, we head over to the, the Star Runner yeah, the next head, morning? Head to the Star Runner the next morning and okay. go to yeah. try to find Brown. Okay. You're in any trouble tracking him down? Okay. All right. So, so hey, can we can we talk to you in, in private again? Uh, yes, of course. Of course. Yeah. Takes you into the captain's, uh, captain's chamber there. Kind of sit down and explain. I, I had another one of my visions last night at dinner. Um, I saw uh, a mob boss who's actually um, Matisse's old boss uh, putting out a bounty with a bounty hunter who then brought in uh, a woman. And she's in a, a building being held on, on the planet Dakor in a place, a city called Tamilar. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, no, but I have not heard of that. She's being held prisoner there. I could probably find the building at least if we got to the planet. And uh, I have a strong intuition that it, it would be very meaningful for me and, and or us if I rescue her. 
but the planet is about two months away. So I just wanted to check if that's something where you think the crew would be up for a trip to see what, what's to be found in this very modern futuristic city. Suppose, yeah, supposedly um, it's a high tech city. It might be a good it's, opportunity for some trade or something. Yeah, you know? it was it was basically left by a alien culture of some kind. Nobody really knows where it came from. It's very different from a lot of other places we've been before. Well, I've never uh, been to a place like that, so uh, I will uh, inform the crew that we will leave tomorrow. So okay. gather whatever things you need. We will stock up for a long trip, and okay. we will leave. Tomorrow morning. That sounds awesome. Thank you. All right. Time to do some shopping. See if anybody needs anything. <laughs> How are we doing on equipment? Uh, I've got my laser swords. I had found someone who sold buffed armor, but it was too expensive for me at the time, I believe. Mm. I think I took a note on it. Did we get a long rest? Yes. Okay. Uh, I've got my action just point uh, Mute for one second. Mm-hmm. Assembling the, the play gym for her, Chris. Oh, is Mark putting it together? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Parents are babysitting the baby for us so we can play D&D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, um... Uh, healing potions, I think. Everything. Yeah, I was just about to ask about that. Yeah, how are we doing them? Potions of healing? I have one. Yes, I have one potion of healing. I think most of us have them still. Um, Greg is shaking his head. I think, I think I've, he. I've got one. one. Yeah, I have one. I have two, actually. Okay. Well, we could rove around and see if we can find any more, just in case we want to have the additional stock, just in case, you know. We need to get ourselves some wake-up juice. Because <laughs> at this point, that's about all they're good for. Somebody goes down, getting them back on their feet. <laughs> so you're going to look for healing, poisons of healing yeah. at, the, at the lesser market? Yeah. I mean... And then the, the adrenaline shots, I don't think we want to go to the kind of places we would have to go to find those besides I got no problem with that. Carry. You want to see if I can scrounge one up? They're kind of expensive, but I think we can afford it. Right. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think I will do that. That's probably that's not a bad idea. I'll go scrounge around the back alley, see if I can prime myself <laughs> a uh, good deal shot. On, an adrenaline, on one of those six-shot adrenaline things. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to... Uh, oh, this die here, and okay. So there are, there are four potions of healing uh, okay. available at the lesser market, and I think there were fifty gold apiece. I if I remember mistaken. right, yep. Okay, I will okay. contribute some to that, um, but I don't have to hold on to it. Uh, okay. I'll keep an extra because I'm usually the one that ends up running around put, getting people back yeah, up. One, so two. Okay. I'll drop in 50 for that. Okay. Janie, right. do you do you want to take one? A what? Uh, a potion of healing. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I've already paid for As one. I um, so don't there's... have one. Okay, and so I can, three. I'll buy a second one. Hey, there's okay. four players. I, mean, I don't know how many are available. So <laughs> There four. are four. So Four available. Uh, three we've just purchased. Yeah. If you want I can, to buy the I last can one, buy one as well. Then have. Okay. So each of us buys one, basically. Yeah. yeah. And someone holds on to the one I bought. Uh, Ooh, uh, let's hold on to the one. Because I have two already. Should, should be you, Jamie, because, you know yeah, I, I'm about to have two. Give it or, to GH. Oh, okay. If you can keep Let track GH of it. Let GH88 hold sure. one. GH88. Okay. That way he can okay. push him, sure. <laughs> that way he can... Uh, you can feed on. It would help if I was looking at the right character sheet. <laughs> Details, detail. That always does help. I'm looking at Sapphire instead of Janie. <laughs> Sun sword? What? What? I'm like, this doesn't look like. It, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the Curse funny. of Shroud campaign, which is a lot of fun. It was fun. Thank you, John, for running. No yes. Problem. Hopefully, I'll do. Better on the next one than if I were to do another oh, one and not screw up your final encounter. <laughs> you mean not pwn us as hard as you could have on the final encounter? Are you kidding? I wanted to pwn you harder. You guys were just 
put had me on ropes the whole time. I was very hard to deal with. I think if we, if we hadn't <laughs> taken out uh, what's her face so quickly, things would have gone much harder. Yeah. Okay, John, let's abstract make a uh, charisma check. Let's Drax make a charisma check. Oh, boy. I'm making this hard. Um, anything in particular? Yeah, uh, can I put into that? Nope, just roll and add your charisma modifier. Okay, well, that's going to suck. Boy, am I, I'm near him. <laughs> Does my thing work? I'll that's, that, that, that's saving throws, Greg. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was uh, trying to help. <laughs> so so, so uh, what, what was your roll, John? Four. Oh, oh no. I am grumpy today. Uh, okay, so so you find somebody, but they're willing to sell it for 750 gold. Oh, jeez. Ouch. Yikes. I got half yeah. of that. I could pitch in. I, could, yeah. <laughs> I, I can pitch in, too. I could I'll pitch give in you... about 200. Uh, I could uh, probably do that, too. Yeah, I, I, can, I can collect when I come back. Oh, okay, so 200 from me to you. Okay. Uh, I don't even. Is any, are you guys with me? Is the question. Because well, we could have given I only. You money before you left. Yes. I don't think anybody would let you go fully unaccompanied. Strax would want to, but I don't think anybody would let him. No. Uh, that would make sense. Uh, because I've only got 650 on me. <laughs> yeah. We can assume that everybody is with you. Okay. I would have uh, at least gone with him. Don't split the party. <laughs> it's fun. The fun things happen when you split the party. <laughs> I'm fun. taking away 200. Okay, I took 200, away 200. Two, four, that, six. Okay. I'll take away. That leaves 150. Uh, yeah. That leaves 150 from me. Okay. So okay, have uh, we have one adrenaline shot. Yeah. Custom item made by me. Made by me. 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 <laughs> Got a drugs. Drugs. Get the drugs, man. Don't do okay. drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. No. <laughs> unless, you live, whack. unless you live on the rocker brawl. Crack is whack. Crack is whack. All right, adrenaline so you have healing potions, right. you have adrenaline shot. Is that all you guys are uh, looking to do before you leave? Um, let's see. I'm still good on personal atmospheres. I still got like five of them. Um, I'm going to throw you guys into some situations where you get knocked out into space. Yeah. <laughs> Floating off the ship somewhere. Got to use your personal atmospheres. <laughs> <laughs> We were somewhere once already that had bad atmosphere. The, the Citadel. Yeah, it was like poisonous yeah. atmospheres. And stuff. Yeah, I have like four of those things, too. <laughs> so everybody's yeah, good? As far as weapons Don't and stuff like ideas, that, yeah, guys. nothing that I can afford right now. I think now. so. I think yeah. we're good. Okay. So you return to the Star Runner. Captain Braun's got the ship all set to go. Morning, Captain. So. Good morning. Good morning. So he uh, tells Olo to um, uh, get everything to get everything ready to get the ship going, uh, and uh, you set out. And the trip is, you know, very uneventful. There is a point where the Star Runner passes by a uh, beautiful blue nebula that sort of draws the crew's attention for a couple of days. So as planet, as the planet uh, Decor comes into view. It has a shine unlike anything else the crew has probably seen. Maze, the Star Runner's Changeling Entertainer, explains that the entire planet is artificial, constructed from various metals. Uh, at its core is a huge magical power source rumored to have been constructed by the Arcane, uh, who are a race of blue giants that supply spaceborne civilizations with a variety of magical devices, including spell jamming helms like the one that powers the Star Runner. What, uh, whatever way this mysterious power source functions, it is somehow able to create and maintain an air envelope big enough for the entire planet. So it doesn't really have an atmosphere per se, it's, but it does have an air envelope. So uh, the area within a mile of uh, Dakor's artificial surface is teeming with spacefaring vessels of all shapes and sizes. 
The term surface is used very loosely as the entire planet seems to be constructed of countless walkways, platforms, roads, thoroughfares, and promenades strung between buildings of all shapes and sizes with no such thing as a ground level. Uh, looking down could easily induce a feeling of vertigo as the construction seems to go on forever, eventually ending in a small glowing point at the maximum range of your vision, which is most likely the glow from the planet's power source. The Star Runner begins its approach to Tomalar, City of the Ancients, and has no problem finding a landing platform. The Star Runner's pilot, Hal, gently docks the ship alongside the landing platform so the gangplank can be lowered. Captain Braun allows the crew to, to uh, disembark, but gives them specific instructions to stay close. He wants to be able to leave in a hurry if needed. I don't know why you'd think that. Uh, he asks you to use the uh, communicator brooch to keep himself and Hal informed upon completion of your mission. Again, in case they have to we'll leave in a hurry. Okay. So, Mary, uh, hurry. Mary. Uh, hey, DM, it's, it's worth noting I am going to wear the black wig that I had purchased before. Okay. After the arena fight. So, what, so what cosplay are you doing? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> not not the chick with blowing, glowing blue hair when there were people who had bounties on me on this planet previously, and I don't know if they're still active. Potentially. Okay. So, seems seems yeah. like a reasonable yeah. precaution. Yeah. Are we going to have to blow this place up, too? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Although, come to think of it, we only ever really blew up one place. We've tried and others and didn't quite work. Yeah, where's the space station? Oh, yeah. We caused a societal pivot on a whole planet of various humanoid monsters. Yeah, humanoids. but that's not the same as blowing it up. <laughs> no, but we probably would want to tread lightly instead of blowing things up. <laughs> probably right. We don't know much about this place, although it seems like uh, it would be a potential cool source of knowledge for Eustrax, given yeah, I'm definitely what Maze told us open. about the history. I didn't know some of that. Hey, there's yeah. an artificial planet. They, yeah, they might have a few interesting ideas, things to make. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So, Arvin, smack, smack. <laughs> Arvin, you do feel a certain pull toward the city. Okay. All right. So I kind of, they're docked there. So I, I feel a pull through the city. So I kind of say, all right, I have a general idea of where we need to go. You have a bearing. Wanna, if we want to set out and at least oh, we got scope, time to do scope out the building, learn the lay of the land a little bit. I mean, we could see oh. what we see along the way. All right. Sounds like we got time to do some shopping. Let's go do some shopping. <laughs> okay. So, so you're just gonna like sort of head off into the city and look for, look for uh, vendors. Yeah. Yeah. Look for the vendors and, and then kind of uh, generally head towards where I feel the building is, just to kind of do recon on the building itself first. So I don't even know if we'd be trying to go in right away. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, there, there. I mean, it's a very large, you know, um, city. It seems to. Um, you know, it has like places to eat, and it has has shops and vendors and things. Um, uh, if you're looking for something in particular, uh, let me know. I mean, I'm still looking for magic armor, but I'm assuming I'm not going to find it for a better price here than I did on the I rock. Mean, it's yeah. magic yeah. planet. I'm hoping that maybe me. magic items might be a little more wonderful. Let me try this here. So hold on. So you're looking for uh, magical studded leather, is like that right? this, Yeah, plus one studded leather, ideally. Okay. So I'm going to 90% dial dice. Here we go. Let's see what your chances are. Uh, okay. So uh, you do find a place that has it, but it, but it is not any um, less expensive. Okay. So 1,500 gold, which is yeah. quite a bit out of reach for me right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we pool our resources, maybe. Oh, but is it worth right. it? We don't know what else we might have to do with that money here right now. Mm-hmm. 75 a piece, right? Uh, is that right? 1500 no, 1500 So, that would be divided by four. Go 750 divided by two. Three seventy-five a piece. 
Yeah, three seventy-five. Yeah, that, that's, that's what yeah. I said. <laughs> oh yeah, I, on, oh, I only only, only in the seventy-five came through. That's why we were looking at you like you had two heads. Sorry. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell, guys? Yes, three seventy-five. It's not like you shared a mess up on math. Well, like, <laughs> maybe her. Oh. Maybe her internet. Her internet. Medicine, I however. did not say uh, a thing. <laughs> I also heard seventy-five. I think Sarah's internet like, cut out when she said it. I yeah. said three seventy-five. I was like. Okay. Blip 75. We'll take your word for it, Sarah, this time. I believe her. Don't get snarky with me, Snarky McSnarkison. <laughs> I'm waiting for Sarah's middle finger to be shown. <laughs> there, it there it is. There it is. Oh, hello, cat. Hi, sir. Hmm. Okay. Um, um, hey, maybe so, we can find so, something so restaurants, on the vendors, you know, all, um, all kinds of things. It's a big city. Do magic items seem to be a little bit more readily available? No, they, they actually don't. Um, no, no. I mean, I mean, you kind of feel like the rock actually has more um, a higher likelihood of finding magic items. Uh, okay, this place is technological item. Well, I mean, you can magical. You you can get you know plenty of personal atmospheres. You can mm. um, probably find some more potions. Potions mm. probably be fairly common. Um, there, there are weapons. You know, you can, you can buy laser pistols. You know, uh, laser rifles. I hate whatever. those things. <laughs> Can't hit the broadside of a barn with one of those. <laughs> uh, the rifle? Nah. Now nah, keep with good old uh, bolt caster. That works. <laughs> uh, you do eventually come within proximity to the building, um, Arvine. So, okay. so you, you, you tell me what you want to do with regard to that kind of tell the others I think this is the place what, what do you think we should check out so we understand what it is that we need to get into and how, how to plan our angle of attack all right can you give us a visual on the building the Hello. building is a large uh, four-sided building maybe 500 feet long on a side and perhaps 50 floors high squarish yeah. with a symbol on the side that covers most of the floors the symbol is a circle with an x in the middle and the color purple there is a 20 foot wide platform that surrounds the building and connects to four promenades that connect with the surrounding thoroughfares you know this this big web of web of walkways and things um the the roof you believe is a landing area because you see like a small ship kind of fly um down and then sort of out of sight to the roof. And you, you see what you think is like um, some kind of a fin or something of a ship like sort of on the corner that's closest to you. So you, you think there's like a landing pad or landing area up there on the roof that has ships mm -hmm. going. Okay. Um, Does it appear that there are guards? Uh, it is um, surrounded by guards that are wearing white armor and carrying what looks like modified laser rifles. Um, Oddly, the guards all seem to be um, to have identical uh, have identical physical proportions, oh. <laughs> and they're all wearing they identical clones? white helmets. <laughs> their faces. Uh, there are four sets of double doors, one on each side of the building, with a pair of guards flanking each set of doors. A dozen or so other pairs of guards are walking around the outside of the building. You see pairs of guards leaving the building and heading into the city promenades as well as pairs of guards returning from the promenades to enter the building mm. Mm. Oh, well, at least we know that won't be able to hit us if they start shooting at us <laughs> <laughs> no metagaming Strax I was going to say that's a bit of a, a bold leap, <laughs> bold leap. That, that was like a Kate sized leap <laughs> yeah, I love <know. laughs> <Love> you <laughs> <laughs> Do we happen to hear an orchestral set of <laughs> <laughs> music? <Tiffany>. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's people like, listen out for that orchestra. If that, right. you start hearing that, you know we got trouble. <laughs> da, 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 da. I think you copyrighted. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh crap! No, uh, kinda, I kind of turn to to Matisse and let's say, does this trigger any memories for you? Like, did you ever? You know, would, would you know enough from your past that maybe you would know other ways into this building that aren't heavily guarded? Um, I touch the building to see if I feel... Well, well hold, hold on a second. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the building is heavily guarded. With oh, guards. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah. You just walk up there. You just building. touch the touch the building. Start petting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the guards just stand there and do nothing. You know, whatever. <laughs> Who is this person? Let him touch the building. Yeah. Her. Let her touch the building. Well, instead, I I focus on it and try to see if anything comes to me from deep inside my memory bank. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a joke there, Sarah. We even there broke it Sarah. <laughs> oh, you crude people. Yeah. Oh, you love me and you know it. <laughs> uh, wow. So, so Greg, are you just trying to remember? Um, I'm trying to recall. Are you using memory of a thousand lifetimes? Yes. I'm okay. trying to recall if there's any resonance of feelings or... So, so it would have to be some sort of a strong emotional event that would have occurred um, around this around the building. So, so I mean, how, how close do you want to get to the building before you activate that power? Um, how close can I get before the guards notice I'm there? Well, there doesn't seem to be anyone coming or going along like the walkways, except for the guards. Okay. So, if you were to even step out onto the walkways and start to move towards the building. That would be suspicious based on the activity that you're observing from kind of a oh, distance. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know that you could get that close unless you wanted to try and see if the guards try to stop you. I might be very conspicuous with a yeah, tall blue you are armored. Pretty large and blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's a good thought, but but just it seems like you know the place is heavily guarded and nobody's coming or going from it except for those soldiers. So getting close enough to use your ability right, right at this point would make you would probably cause a problem. Got it. Maybe, maybe RV. Maybe we can try going down the somewhere and see if there's a tunnel to go in. Or it's always up to the roof. Too. You, you, you you could go under the building, but you'd have to find you'd have to somehow unless find you can ball. fly. You'd have to you have to find some way to get to get down there. Find lower walkways, you know. Um, um, there doesn't our, appear our, to be any, there doesn't appear to be any lower walkways that go below it. I mean, there are, there are ships and there are buildings and there are other uh, businesses and so forth, like above and below this area. Mm. Um, but there's no walkway that goes like to the underside of the building. Okay. Okay. Is there a business that's in proximity to it that might be connected via the walkways? Um, there are a bunch of them. Um, but again, like, like, like the, there's a walkway on each one of the four sides and it goes out from, from this building and then it basically connects with other walkways that are in front of businesses. So I have 10 pitons. I can climb underneath. No, <laughs> probably not going to work. Um, I can fly, but, um, that's not everybody else. Um, I believe I can fly. Uh, yeah, how I think that pulling out your wings right now might be counterproductive to your wanting to stay incognito. I, I concur. <laughs> yeah. So the only um, thought do that we, I do have we... is, is maybe we can go to one of the businesses that are closest to it and see if we can see more from that vantage. Do point. I see any businesses that sell shiny things? Yes, you do. I want to go to a business that sells shiny things. While we're doing that, can you also tell me if, if there's armaments on the roof that we could see? Uh, you don't Guns see any says. sort of weaponry. You don't see any kind of cannons or any laser um, um, weapons of any kind up there. Um, you do see ships occasionally coming, going from the top. There are smaller flying vehicles that sometimes go down below the building, but you don't think that they're you don't think they're specifically meant for this building. It's just you know there, there are little tiny ships and. Um, little like hover hovercrafts and things like flying all over the place. It's like a, it's like this very stereotypical futuristic city. Is there space there where we could hover like the Star Runner over the roof and basically storm the building from the roof? Like, um, is it there? An there area there that's is enough too crowded space. Or not? There is there is enough space yeah. above. Like you could conceivably fly the Star Runner over the top of the building. Yes. Okay. Um, mm. Because basically, basically, like above this building, there seems to be like a big, clear, open area, and there are more like skyscrapers that sort of like um, the, those four promenades that go out from this building. They connect mm-hmm. to all these other businesses and all these other structures, and some of those structures are like skyscrapers that go up really high. Um, but right here in the center of this area, 
where this building is. There's nothing directly above this building, but there are skyscrapers that are kind of all around it. Okay. Maybe you guys feel like an airdrop? Arvine kind of quietly discusses that idea with the party while they move on to look for uh, Janie's shiny things. Yeah, are you looking for anything in particular, Janie? No, I was just trying to make a decision of what to do. (laughs) (laughs) Are you can buy yourself some. Instead of standing around and doing nothing, <laughs> let's go look at shiny things. <laughs> you can buy yourself some fun necklaces and things if you want. Some, some sure. Rings, some bracelets. Yeah, I'll buy some right. bling. Can we okay. use the little so shaking. If you want to wait until the tomorrow, I think I can uh, work up a little something that can uh, get us on the onto that roof. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And I have this little idea buzzing around in my head. I think. I can make a little, well, you know, I've been doing a lot of spatial experimentation recently, so I think I can make something that, if somebody's falling, would actually slow their fall. Like a hovercraft. Yeah, kind of but how, do, how, how does that get us onto the roof? Well, we just jump off from above it and fall down, and when we get close, we turn it on. Land safely uh, on the roof. Like a parachute. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. And and the ships that are coming and going up there are just gonna ignore you. <laughs> well, just don't hit them. <laughs> I like I like the idea of bringing our ship in and and having that quick exit if we need it. So like if we cause enough yeah, of a fuss that we need but to, but getting clearance get off the planet. Like no, they're well, gonna ask not. questions. Shiny things, shiny things, okay. shiny things. Let's shiny go things. look at the shiny things and then we'll figure out what we want to do. Uh, I thought we were discussing this while we were looking at shiny things. <laughs> you guys can discuss it while you're looking at at the shops if you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Janie, you can um, basically you can designate uh, a gold piece value and say that you bought uh, an, a necklace, you know, a, a two gold piece necklace, you know, a five gold piece bracelet, and you can decide what kind of a gem you want in it, as long as it's not like you know. Well, no, I mean, yeah, you, you could say it's like a diamond, or you could say it's a ruby, or whatever you want to say it is. Um, but just assign a gold piece value to it, and and that's what you get because there's plenty of selection here. So you spend as much as you want. <laughs> I want to spend a hundred gold piece. That ten platinum's a hundred gold pieces, right? No, uh, ten pl- uh, Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Because it's ten each platinum's gold. ten gold, so ten yep. times ten. Yep. Yeah, Am I mathing click, right, John? You're mathing right. Actually, <laughs> if, if you click on your gold, it'll math it for you. Say up at the top, total currency in GP. Well, I have 22 platinum in it. That's added into my gold total currency right now, yes. Yeah. So, uh, What are people's passive perceptions? Uh, I think our Venus. Yeah, 15. Uh, 13. 13. 15. 12. 12. So our Venus is a 15? Yep. Okay, so so you happen to notice that the the ships that are coming and going from the top of the roof have the same symbol on it as the side of the building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that would make it harder to get up there. Yeah, so we either we just like I said, they're getting clearance to land on that roof is probably not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So if the if the ship dro- uh, lands to drop us off, it's going to attract a lot of attention. So I'm, I think can keep the ship on standby, and then they can just dive in and scoop us up if they need to. But they don't need to land. Hmm. We cause some kind of diversion, everything. Maybe a diversion or divert I mean, who? Divert what? Well. well <sighs> Given Matisse and I both have some history with the owner of this building, I mean, I, I'd love to suggest it, but what if uh, you well, and no, Jane, Hold on, Kate. Well, what's that? With, um, with, you don't with the, know anything about this building. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, all right. So. Roll that back. So I don't know for sure, like, if they could march in there, that, like, if Strax and Janie masqueraded as bounty hunters, this might not be the building where... This woman was originally delivered as a bounty. Yeah. Uh, am I making too much of a leap with that? It's it's. Hang on, we need a little bit more information. Uh, sorry, go ahead and finish your thought, Chris. I'm just saying that that Arvine, what what Arvine saw, was you know Greg's old 
Greg's old employer, putting out a bounty. Uh, Arvind saw that some bounty hunter, um, wearing red armor, by the way, uh, some bounty hunter wearing red armor, um, yeah. captured this woman. Uh, and the woman is, you saw this building and you saw that she is in the building. That is all you know. Okay, it seems like so. you're. It seems like you're drawing broad assumptions. Like, so oh, this, this guy I don't the even. Building. I don't like, even. No, yeah. So I don't even no know idea. if that guy is in this building or if she's changed hands already. I just know that she's being held Hold there. somewhere. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Okay. I'm just asking you not to make okay. the broad no, assumptions. That, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So. Uh, hey, uh, no, blue girl, Matisse. Why don't you, why don't you ask around? See if we can uh, get some information on what that building actually is. What is that symbol? Blue girl. Hmm. <laughs> it's part of Strax's usual charm. <laughs> hey, well, he's got mm, a nine charisma, so don't. So he's not going to be the one I like. <laughs> so, so Matthias, if you want to make a uh, charisma check uh, oh, to talk could, to to talk to the locals, okay. This, which is why I asked him to do it. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll give a try. <laughs> Well, that or Janie, right? Janie, Janie has some natural charm. Uh, yeah, that's true. Janie can help. Uh, I can. It, you can make Janie's it. Too Janie's too very. I did roll. <laughs> Janie is very good at I getting. I did roll a critical. Though. Oh, a nice gurg. Nice. So, charisma. If I do intimidation, that gives me plus five. No, no, it's, it's charisma. It's a charisma. It's charisma. 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 Yeah. charisma. Uh, so it's plus two to that. So it's twenty-two. Yeah, you're, we're not trying nice. to rough up the locals for information. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where does that building get jerk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought a hundred gold pieces worth of jewelry. Okay. Right. Uh, so, Greg, uh, Matisse uh, finds out that the building is a military post uh, bought three months ago uh, by a group called the Illithid Empire. Oh. Mm. Oh no. Apparently I spelt bot B O G H T. It's out of boot about. <laughs> Bug it. They Bug. bought it. Oh baka. Uh, so so in character, do any of us know what an illithid is? Are we well enough traveled yes. that we, yes, we you know do. that? Yep. Yeah. No. There, there is an Illithid embassy on the rock. I don't know what one of those so, is personally. So. Uh, it's a, it's, uh, do you want a mind flare, sir? Not really. <laughs> they, they were in uh, all those Suffice wait. to say, Janie probably doesn't have anything to worry about from them. Oh, because psychic damage? Because <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they eat brains. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you jackass! <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, sir, I sir. would like to cast magic missile on my pirate. <laughs> 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 uh, I will allow it. Danny, don't waste the resources. <laughs> <He's> shocking grasp. <laughs> <laughs> So which one point. we know about these guys, we don't want to try to just waltz in there. Yeah, that's problematic. Uh, AC um, twenty. <laughs> <laughs> you hit. <Is> that hit. <laughs> Ow. I mean, uh, <laughs> hold on, Janie's Janie shocking her brother. Lightning damage. <laughs> Take ten lightning damage. Strags. How much? Ten lightning. <laughs> How Ten. many tem- how many temporary Ow. hit points do we have for Mace? Three. <laughs> Three. Three. <laughs> wow. Wow. Three. Okay. So uh, I that not the, the, sh- the shtick hasn't been used before, but if I if I scope out the building and all this time while we're wandering around and Matisse is trying to get intel, uh, do I see what Tingle. looks like like any place around the building where it's like maybe a walkway that's a little more sheltered and out of the way, like somewhere where we could get the drop on some of the guards and try to muscle our way. Kill, kill some, no, kill some guards and steal their armor. Oh, okay. It was as far as far as the building itself goes. No, it seems to be. Okay. It seems to be okay. very specifically, you know, in that spot in the middle of all these skyscrapers, with um, those four promenades leading to it so it's kind of isolated itself it seems very deliberate 
that they, that they bought this building right here. Yeah. Um, there are pairs of guards that are going to and from the promenades and into the city. Okay. So you could try to go after some of them. But the one, but as far as being on the walkways, all the walkways are clearly visible from all sides. I'd say we go after the ones who are going out into the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, there are I pairs, guess we there just are... completely abandoned the uh, plan to go in via the roof. I didn't like the plan to go in via the roof in the first place. I'm sorry, uh, Strax. <laughs> never like my ideas. Seriously. That's not true. Good I ideas. This one, this one be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think those devices are awesome. And if you're working on them, we, we should wait to do this mission until we have them, just in case we do have to take a header off of one of these buildings. Uh, well, Anything uh, with slow fall would be amazing to have. Uh, but as our primary means of planning, I, I, I don't think so. There's a strange lack of guardrails on a lot of these huge drops. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we, if we fall off, I don't see that there's anything to land on down there anyway. You, you, might, you might hit another building or another, or another like a walkway or a promenade, or you might just keep falling. Hit me with your it's, 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 it's this big like, amalgamation of all these and walkways ever, and buildings and everything ever. below you. I mean, Forever. do you have that gear ready to go, Strax, just in case it does become relevant here? Uh, no, like I said. I, I think it's a I'd terrible to idea. Do you have it ready? In out of character. That <laughs> means you need a long rest. Yeah. <laughs> you need a long rest? Yeah. Yes. Uh-oh, we could go back to the Star Runner for a night and plan try to, to do this. Try to think about it. Yeah. I mean, I still think we should try to. Uh, what the do you guys. The longer you guys just talk, the more Janie's buying. What do you think about the idea? We need to get the... back to the ship to rescue yeah. Janie. Come on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Head back to the ship, regroup for a night, and then come back the next day. That's... All right. Let me re- let me recombobulate some spells here. Okay. Well, we know that there's a bunch of guards, so we have to kind of figure out how to get around. All right. Well, that, that's my point is if we if we ambush some of them out in the city, uh-huh. we can steal some armor, we can look like guards, and then we can march in there, you know, maybe have one of us play as a prisoner or something. You know, We're going to be I, like I the flying have, winkies. You know, I still oh, have wee. those bridges that turn you invisible. Oh. That, see, I was almost thinking something like that. Although I can huh. only actually come to think about it, I think I've only got two. I don't think I could do the whole, I don't think I could do all of those. Yeah, what am I now? And some of us aren't very stealthy, but that it could still help. So yeah, if you got them. Hmm. So we got to get around those those clones. So what I mean, is that? Those... What is it that you're doing, John? Uh, just re- just uh, I'm I'm looking for a spell to pull out to put in Featherfall. I think it might be a sound idea. We can sneak in there. Maybe if the others are invisible, that. We would stand a chance if we went. Um, well, I, I, I think make a history. Could, could I make like an intelligence check on my knowledge of mind players or relatives? Sure. How much do I know about? Them? I don't know crap about them. Uh, well, do we seven. know if the guards are even illithids in the first place? You don't. Yeah. I don't, but it's safe to assume that there are some in there. Mm-hmm. It's just a question of whether or not uh, uh, Strax would think, with, with a roll of seven, as to whether, whether or not he'd think of Illithids as mind readers. Um, I would say that you that Strax knows that they use psychic abilities. They have hmm. psychic attacks. Um, you're not sure if they can read minds or not, but okay, not it, sure. it's not it's not um, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 possible. entirely possible. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, well, disguises may be all well and good, but I don't think they'll get them get us much farther than the front door. If these illithids are in here, they they're psychic creatures, so I don't know if maybe they wouldn't be able to just see see right through any disguise that we put on anyway. Maybe um, we get in, uh, but just have a plan B. Is all I'm I still, yeah, I mean. I mean, it still seems like the path of least resistance. So I'm worried about the roof just because of the, the, the constant ship traffic. We don't know how many guards are on the ships. So we, we could get ourselves outnumbered pretty quickly, depending on how it goes. So, 
plan B is fireball. That's the only reason. Well, I mean, that, it's always plan B or maybe plan C. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. I like fireballs. I like fireballs. I like fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost thinking that we could let ourselves get captured and then try that route, but that might be. Well, not- if if we dress up a couple of us as guards, even we could act like we have others captured. Like like uh, Matisse, uh, you're a lot taller than those guards. You're not going to fit well in that armor, no matter what we do. Yeah, if they're all so... kind of about the same size, then it's it's possible I mean- that Janie and Arvine could masquerade as those but but the hobgoblin and, and the diva probably could so not. so janie uh, we could, could go in masquerade invisible. well we could masquerade as guards and either be bringing you guys in as prisoners and ask for directions to the cell block yeah you know, or, or Why go invisible that are although i know in prisoners need to ask for directions mm. it depends if they're new on assignment hey dude where's the cell block yeah yeah <laughs> Mm. Well, let's try that plan and see how it goes. Strax and I. Strax and I. I have a pretty good persuasion. So, what's the invisible, John? Is it just invisibility spell? Yeah, it's just regular invisibility. Okay. I can, and I've got, I can cast it twice and I'll be out of second level spells. So, we're going to jump at least two guards out in town to get armor for a couple of us to masquerade. And this this is the next day. Yeah. And what are we going to do with all the little robots? And we talk to the little robots Uh, GH88 and SD01. Oh. Then go into the. You didn't see any droids of any kind going in and out of the building. Yeah, they are a little Uh conspicuous. Well, I Just mean, we can always put GH, we can always put SDO one into the sack. Mm-hmm. Right. The bag of holding? Yeah. 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 Sack. Uh, sack. <laughs> put Testicles in the sack. of holding. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and we went there. Isn't that the definition of all testicles? <laughs> Unless they've been snip snipped. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you have to go hold there? forever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, okay. so so yeah, with the we could try to jump enough guards to dress up. I mean, GH88 would probably fit well into the armor, right? He, he's about normal human size. Um, he might fit into it, although the way that he walks would be a little conspicuous. Okay, <laughs> I mean, we could act like we're escorting him too. Escort some one person. Maybe as a they are the droids they're looking for, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, that would mean that whoever you're escorting is going to probably have to go in unarmed. Yeah. Well, Give maybe 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 us. we escort GH88 and have you and uh, Matisse be invisible. Yeah, GH88 doesn't have any armaments. He's just got his little needle equipment, which I think is hidden in him when he's not in use, right? He, he's not arms, right? I, I don't know. He doesn't have any weapons. Uh, he, yeah, so. Yeah. so I like, hope he hides his needle when not in use. Does that sound like a plan? He said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. We've gone oh south for the winter, everyone. <laughs> oh, dude, I live south for the winter. <laughs> okay, so so there there are plenty of guards the next day that are coming and going from this building. Okay. And um, you start to follow a couple of them. Yep. And uh, let's have all of you make stealth checks for me. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. And just I'm to see how conspicuous you're being. Which dice is going to play nice because tonight? My armor still giving me disadvantage on stealth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oof! Arvin's not stealthy today at all. Ooh. And yet. Okay, I will take that. A 17 and 18. So 17 on the disadvantage. Okay. This one, so 18. 13. Uh, 13. Okay. Let's see. Janie? 20. Nice. Good job, guys. Uh, and Ivine. 
Uh, seven. <laughs> Aren't you wearing a wig? Yeah. You should be more stealthy than that. Uh, uncharacteristic <laughs> lack of grace. Arvine yeah. catches her cloak on something. Yeah. Or... <laughs> in, in, in the interest of fairness, uh, Greg, you do know that your armor gives you disadvantage on stealth, right? Oh, shoot. So I need to roll another one. Yeah. Okay. Arvine's wig like spins around. <laughs> It's the same. Tristan falls on her okay. face. <laughs> All right, so uh, so you don't you don't think that they are noticing you trying to sort of covertly follow them, and um, there is a point when they go down in between a couple of buildings, okay. and there really doesn't seem to be a lot of traffic going through there, okay. so it seems like it might be a good opportunity. Okay, I jump them. Go now. <laughs> <laughs> So you follow them down, down this, grass. this little alleyway. Yep. Um, so, so what is your plan to subdue them? Shocking grasp. Uh, <laughs> just, just attack them. Is that, is that, is that what the deal is? She's gonna yeah. try not to try not to damage the armor. She's yeah. gonna shock <laughs> their asses. Are they wearing metal armor? Uh, it doesn't look like it's made of metal, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's kind of like this plastoid type material. Yeah. Hey, Strax, do you have mending in case we need to repair things? You're asking a craftsman if he's got mending. Of course I got mending. <laughs> okay, so then it's not an issue if we damage the armor. Shocking grass! Game I can on. fix a few things. <laughs> okay, so, so you walk up to them and, and, like, you know, you're 40 feet away. You know, you're 30 feet away. You're 20 feet away. Yep. You, know, you get to about 10 feet away and, like, they, they're kind of looking over their shoulder at you. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not unusual to have people in the, in the city walking near other people in the city. Um, but because you're alone in the eye, they, they kind of seem to start to get a little bit suspicious at about 10 feet. Okay. Um, do you want to, does somebody want to launch them with some kind of an attack at this point? Poison spray. Yeah. Ar- Ar- poison spray? Arvine. Yeah. Okay. Arvine wing, wings out the, the, the laser swords. And uh, just go ahead and r- do poison spray them. there, um, Janie. On both of them? Sure. Okay. So it's a constitution saving throw. Constitution save and throw. Let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything that's gonna that would actually be. So this guy is TK four two one. This guy is TK four two two. TK four two one. Um what what was it easy, sir? Uh fourteen. Fails. Okay, that's uh seventeen poison. Seventeen poison. Your okay. D12s. Uh, <laughs> nice. TK422 also fails. Um, That's 16 poison. Okay. <laughs> so so you, so you, the, the, they start to turn around as you're getting very close to them. And Janie casts poison spray, this big puff of green smoke. They, 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 they try to turn around quickly to try to point their modified laser rifles at you. And this puff of green smoke just gets underneath their helmets and it gets inside. They start coughing and hacking and then they fall over. <laughs> really? <laughs> Whoa. Are they dead? Does it? Uh, uh, you, 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 you check them and they appear to be uh, unconscious. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, unconscious. Unconscious. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I look at the others and be like, hey, do we want to interrogate right. one of them and try to figure out where we're going once we're inside? I, I mean, I mean, they are technically, they're dying. Okay. <laughs> they're mm. below zero. They're, they're, they're at zero hit points, so they're making death saves. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, I killed them. I no. killed them. <laughs> well, uh, for real though, do we want to interrogate one of them? I could give them one hit. They're unconscious. Of, of, do you remember what happened yeah. the last time we tried to leave one, leave somebody alive behind? Yes. Get their armor yeah. up. I'll toss them over the edge. <laughs> Cold blooded. <laughs> Watch them and see. Rax is going to kill them from one, two, three. <laughs> so it takes about it takes about like twenty four seconds, and then they're. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. Yeah. Strip them. Okay. <laughs> I got the murdering hobos here. Yeah. Murder hobos! Yay! <sighs> okay, so so you so you take off you take off their armor. One of the guys has a really big pee pee. Okay. Thanks for that info, DM. Thanks. Oh well, if they God. look the same. <laughs> Odd piece on the armor is like really big. Are, are, are they? <laughs> <laughs> are, are they? Are they? Whoa! Are, are they human or are they illithid? Uh They appear to be human. Okay. All right. All right. I start putting on armor. Okay. So Ivy and Janie okay. have the armor. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. Me. That's French for yes. Okay. <laughs> Body's over the edge. So, um, <laughs> so they'll get Search them first. <laughs> Uh, you yeah. see that, I mean, they, they have the modified laser rifles, which I'm, I assume you, you, you take those. <gasps> yeah. Jamie's got yeah. a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, do, do I get any sense on first inspection that they're superior to a normal laser rifle, Chris? Um, so you've never encountered them before. So um, do an investigation check if you want to try to. Actually, can I check in on that? I mean, yeah, you, probably. You can, yeah, make it, you can make a check, John, with, uh, with advantage. Strax, I'll help you. Yeah, All yeah. Right. Well, I get it, Ben. He gets advantage anyway. Okay, he, okay. yeah. Didn't plan I that, that, but you he's got better it. at it than. You just you want, gave Janie a gun. I did. You want did. me Same. investigating also or not? It's up to you, honey, if you want to. Okay. Yeah, sure. 23 straight up adva- uh, intelligence. 23 Ooh. for Strax. Okay, and uh, 19. For... 19. Okay. Um, so, based on the fact that, Arvin, you already use a laser rifle, yep. and Strax is an artificer, you're able to uh, discern. Uh, <sighs> I'll just give you the stats because it's just easier. Um, so, they do uh, a D8 force damage, and they have a range of 2060. So, it's a really, really short range weapon, but it does more damage okay. than a laser rifle or a laser pistol. Okay. But it doesn't have any other properties. You know, laser rifles have aiming, and um, these don't have the aiming property. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that she'd use it as a preferred weapon, but that's interesting. Okay. But for now, she will. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's really not as good as a laser rifle. Right, right. And okay. uh, and it's arguable whether or not it's better than a, a, a laser pistol or not. Well, it's, it right. looks like it's designed Should for, Should I keep you know, one? I mean... Crowd, uh, close quarters combat ish, um, yeah, pretty like much dealing with crowds yeah. and things like that. It's just, yeah, yep. okay. they probably don't have to deal with lo- making you know cross city shots very often, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, are there any distinguishing marks on the uniforms like like numbers or name badges or stuff like that? Um, they, they do have the, the circle with the X on it, the, the, the purple circle with the X, okay, and um, there are there are there are little numbers on on the on the on the back and a little tiny version of the number underneath the zero with the X that gives them a, des- that gives them a designation. Okay. So mm-hmm. what, what are myself and Janie masquerading as just in case somebody uses that name? Okay, I'm not going to use the TKs cause that is actually a Star Wars reference. Yeah. Um, so we will say, um, so, sorry. X 417 and X 892. Arvine, you are X-417, and Janie, you are X-892. Okay. So am I adding a laser rifle to my... Uh, that doesn't exist in D&D Beyond yet. Well, uh, I see the wondrous item created by A.M. Chris Buckner. Yes, which is the regular laser rifle. But but the, okay. these, these are actually laser blasters, and okay. I, I didn't put them in D&D Beyond right now. Okay, but could we... If you want to like put it in your modify, your yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you could make a custom attack or something. You can do whatever you want so that you can track it. Okay. And if after this adventure is over, if you guys still have these, I can make an item and put it in D and D Beyond. Okay, so you can like put the bodies in a dumpster or something. Um, now over the edge, let them fall in. Feed the magic. There, there isn't a place right in this spot where you can go over the edge. Ah, uh, darn. You're like, right. you like in between buildings and, and the walkway goes across. Yeah, dumpster. dumpster out of sight. Yeah. <laughs> That's boring. Uh, so I'll now, watch them so now what are you doing with regards to the droids and the Strax and Matisse? All right, well. Mm-hmm. Now we can either jump more guards to try to get disguises for other people, but that would only work for GH88, kind of. Yeah. You're so, not really sure uh, about that. Yeah, I don't think, because <laughs> of how awkward hit his movement. Um, so... Alright, uh, SDO one get in the bag. <laughs> okay, Steel Defender is in the bag? Steel okay. Defender is in the bag. So it uh, takes him one action to come back out, right? Uh, I think it would take John's action to, to get SDO one out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So then, who who's going invisible and who's playing like their prisoner? Um. 
Well, hang on, Matisse, you said that. Matisse is tall like a Wookiee. It's gotta be Matisse. Oh. I'm actually I'm trying to think of it. It's a bit invisible, me and the, me and JJ88, and you guys can bring Matisse in. If you're, I mean, wasn't there a bounty on you or something like that anyway? Mm. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't a bounty, but Matisse was a different. I don't person know. I can't keep you guys straight. Matisse I can't was keep a all your different straight. person when she. Uh, did not obey orders and abandoned her job as a bounty hunter. Oh, there you go. She's probably yeah. got a bounty on her. So, okay. Well, <laughs> a- Alec would have a bounty. The question would be if anybody knows yet that Alec is Matisse. I don't know if it's widely. It would it's be the best any... I got. Yeah. Uh, so you can think of something different. Let's go ahead with that and just yeah, I'll play okay the prisoner. We can. All right. Try. Well, I fixed the little brooch to myself and kind of. Hammer it into GH88. <laughs> yeah. It's magnetic. It's next to him. It's magnetic. Oh. Okay. Stop <laughs> hammering and... into things. How far away? Oh, how... Wow. Okay, so we're fairly close to the building right yeah. now. Yeah, you're okay. like, you're like a couple blocks away. Okay. Uh, invisibility will last up to an hour, long enough for us to get okay. up there, I should think. So. Okay, so GH88 has that, and Strax has that. Boom, and, boom. Um, we, we vanish. Okay, and uh, the, the the armor that the two of you are wearing, the the uh, trooper armor, has manacles. You can put a set of manacles on on uh, Matisse. Okay, I, I put them on Matisse, but I fix them in a way that they're not actually fully latched. They just look like they are. Okay, if that's possible. Yeah. And, uh, what are you doing about <laughs> Matisse's uh, laser sword and shield? Um kind of look at Strax and say, are you sure you don't want her to be invisible and have me escorting GH-88 as a prisoner? GH-88 doesn't make as much sense as a prisoner. It's a weird prisoner. Yeah, but taking the armor of one of our people just seems risky. Get rid of the armor, just take our weapons. <laughs> Getting people out of armor takes time. Nobody do that. I, I can hang her what? shield, her shield, and her her lasers, her laser sword, like on, on my belt or something like. Sure. Yeah. Like as I long as you have it, and she doesn't. They and I'll be care. walking right with her so that she can get it back pretty much immediately if she okay. needs it. That's, yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. All right, and then you guys head back to the building. Off to the I guess so. Okay. Yep. All right. So I mean, that's all. Um, Chris, walking back real quick, I did tell Bron about this like landing area on the top and ask mm-hmm. if they'd be willing to hover nearby so I can contact them if we need an extraction from the roof. Okay, so 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 before you go back to the building, you are informing yeah. Bron of that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. He he says he can do that. So the um, do do you wait for the ship to get over there? Um. Yeah. Look for the star runner. Sure. Okay. Uh, we might not have time for that. I only got an hour on this invisibility. Okay, uh, so well, it, it takes like wait. five minutes. It take, takes like yeah. five minutes for the Star Runner to get over there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so, and so I kind of like, got to lean it to JD and say, you're, you're doing all the talking here. I'm just going to stick my foot in my mouth if I try to <laughs> <laughs> help uh, sell this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you wait around and about five minutes later, you see the Star Runner among the many ships that are flying around uh you see it take a position not far away from from the roof of, of this building okay so we have arvin and janey uh inside trooper armor and they have matisse as a prisoner and we have strax and gh88 following along invisible hmm. so you you walk up to the building and everything seems fine uh, you go through the doors, and excuse me, everything seems fine. Uh, so I'm going to uh, stop, stop burping. Uh, so let's, uh, Strax, I need you and GH88 to give me stealth checks. Okay. Um, the an- invisibility grants advantage. Correct. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so GH88 gets advantage. I roll regular. So. Uh, oh, hey. Dice are deciding to like me a little bit. Shh, knock on wood. Okay. Uh, 18 for me. 
and GH88. Clank, 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 clank. clank. <laughs> I mean, he's not that Great awkward. Dex check. Oh, good thing I got advantage on that one. 17. Okay. So, you basically, you walk into the building, and the building seems to be an endless maze of hallways. There are many terminals and signs with writing on them in the language of common. Uh, with a with a quick glance, you learn that the guards are called shock troopers, and there are many references to the Illithid Empire. There are also a smaller number of individuals of various races wearing cloth uniforms who seem to be giving orders to the shock troopers. Uh, it doesn't take long to realize that this is that this is indeed a um, military base or okay. military barracks. Um, Arvine, you know the prisoner is somewhere above you, but that is okay. as much as you can sense through your connection with Maine. You know, there, okay. are, there are hallways, there are terminals, there are um, officers and shock troopers, and you know that this person in your vision is somewhere above you. And uh, right now, you're assuming that Strax and GH88, GH88 are there. They're not really mm-hmm. making a lot of noise, um, but you assume that they're there. Okay. So how would uh, how would you like to proceed? Uh, kind of quietly whisper to to Janie. And I think we need to you go. You don't have some... to whisper to me. Okay. I have like the ability. Remember? Okay. And I can so it if, to you. if you're connecting to me to talk with you, then I I, I tell you that there she's being held somewhere above. I, I don't know much else beyond that. Okay, uh, let's see about finding an elevator or something. A lift, yeah. Okay, it, it doesn't take yeah. you long to find a lift. Okay. And okay. Uh, it, it does appear to have um, 50 floors on the lift. Okay. Go to the next one above us, I guess. Yeah, I mean, are, are the floors labeled? <laughs> are the only Is there a directory? There? <laughs> um, there, there, there are terminals around. There's nothing... That's indicating what floor is what in, in the, in the oh, okay. Oh, like computer terminals. I just made the connection on that. Yeah, so the, there are guess. terminals okay. all over the place. Okay, yeah. so I kind of, yeah. as soon as we get off the lift, especially if the floor that, you know, can we go to a floor where I start to feel that the pole is on level with me rather than above? Um, do you want to try? Uh, yes. So, I mean, so, is there a terminal right outside the elevator? I'm going to check a terminal somewhere, either before or after we get on the elevator. Do you know how to use a terminal? Because I, I do. Can, I might be able to figure out a terminal. I don't, but uh, I if, can. If you want to make a check with advantage, Strax, you can try to figure yeah. it out. <clears throat> so, I think uh, stand there. Stand, yes, uh, stand there around you. Kind of act like I'm about to manipulate the keys. Uh, a soft 20. So that's funny. Okay, so so let's assume that Arvine communicates this idea to Janie, who then telepathically communicates it to Strax. Um, and the uh, dirty twenty that uh, Strax got. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, dirty. <laughs> yeah, dirty twenty. <laughs> I mean, soft twenty works too, but I, I just I usually hear it, dirty twenty. Uh, so okay. No, I like I like dirty twenty better than soft twenty. <laughs> okay, Dirt so is always better than soft. <clears throat> <laughs> Greg is abstaining. <laughs> Greg is noping over there, like hard nope. <laughs> we love so, you, Greg. So, Strax, you, you do you are able to figure out that the detention level is level five. Sweet. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming he tells me that. I yeah, we kind of. We're just we're, I can, we're I can, assuming I there's telepathy happening here. Janie, Janie's we don't the have relay. To narrate every yep. detail of it. Yes. <laughs> Unless we want to role play all Level of it. Five. Level five. Level five. <laughs> Seven is right. Out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you go up to level five. Uh, you get off the elevator, and um, you walk into an area where there is. Uh, an officer and, and some more troopers, and uh, one of the officers he, he's sort of at this at this terminal and he says, "Where are you taking this thing?" 
I think, yeah, this was going to Do you punch well. him at these? Genesis <laughs> <laughs> has, has her fake restraints on until our being uh, chooses that's to right. them off. <laughs> I, oh, I, 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 we I were cannot act. to take the prisoner to the detention terminals. <laughs> 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 So, so you say that, Janie, to this to this officer? Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, why not? He says, I wasn't informed about this. I'm going to have to check it out. And he starts, he goes over to one of the terminals and starts, um, like, pushing some buttons on one of the terminals. How many, how many guards are in this room? There's, like, four of them. Um, nothing to see here. There's nothing the question, going on. Uh, question <laughs> on the terminals. Are the terminals, like, stand, freestanding terminals, or are they, like, in set in, in set in, inside like uh, uh, the desk or in or inside a cabinet or something like that. Uh, the ones that this particular officer is operating, there, there's basically there, there's like a bunch sort of like around him. Um, mm-hmm. Sort of like these consoles that are all around him, and he's standing in the center of them. Um, there are other consoles that you saw throughout the facility that are like Im- embedded in the wall. Because I'd like to mess with the cables. Mess with the cables. <laughs> Make it seem like his terminal's on the fritz. <laughs> uh, you would have to get somehow into the terminal before he communicates with somebody else who... Oh, he's like inside like a little... No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I mean, he's, he's standing he's already about... Logged on. He's standing about six feet from you and, mm-hmm. and he's working this terminal in front of him. And, you know, if you want to go over to that terminal and try to mess with the... With, um, the back of it or something, you'd have to you'd have to get into it. I mean, I'm a little confused on exactly what it is you're trying to do. He wants to pull the plug. <laughs> yeah, he wants well, to not put so a much pull the plug. Monkey in a wrench. Give him an yeah, ID make, it look, or... make it make it yeah, make it seem like his terminal is acting up. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, you'd have to you'd have to probably get into it somehow and then figure out how it works before he can communicate to somebody and ask them. If he can, if he can validate the transfer, <laughs> I there isn't like a, a a monitor cable I can just like, like fall out. <laughs> no, it's just it just comes up out of the floor. There there the, there are no cables. It just comes. Oh, it's, okay. It's, it's, that's it's, no that's exposed kind of the cables question. That's, to pull the yeah. power. Okay. That's what I was trying to get to. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. No, no, um, it's it's just like the structure that comes up out of the floor. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Make it hard on me. Um. <laughs> so as he starts to reach for the console. Yeah. I, sir, this prisoner wouldn't be in records yet. We just found this trash on the street as we were leaving for good duty today. We were being good citizens to bring him in. (laughs) Good duty. (laughs) Um, Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Aw, man. Persuasion or deception. Wait, what is he doing? Uh, yeah, deception. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll let you choose. I mean, it's probably the same for you, but I'll let you choose. If you're doing a saving throw and I'm near you, no, it's a, it's, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a it's a check. It's an ability it's a check. check. Oh, I'm gonna, gotcha. I'm gonna hang, use ooh, deception. Hang on, hang on, uh, hang on. Crap, I know right. I gotta find it. Sorry, does it will make a difference here? Okay. Trying to be good citizens. <laughs> 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 For those of you at home, I am giving him the finger. finger. Again. <laughs> Again. Again. It's, 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 it's the three, three middle finger. Listen, so I'm far. just Sarah, trying, to, trying to, you know, make it make thing. sense and stuff. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a seventh level skill. Darn. Um, Damn no. you. Okay. Make your roll, Sarah. Come on, big money. No whammy, no whammy. I rolled a 20 and yeah. a 16. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> nice. So that will be a 22. Because <laughs> I have plus two to my deception. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> All right. He kind of uh, pauses what he's doing for a minute. And he says, um, we'll take the prisoner from here. You can go. Oh, shit. Mm. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so... Hug. Do I break out now? <laughs> That's probably about the point where Arvine would kind of wink at, at Matisse and go through the drill. It, it, 
they've traveled long enough together that Matisse could probably like drop back and elbow Arvina and make it look like a very natural her escaping and, and somehow get a hold of her weapon and shield at the same time. We have telepathy. So that's yeah, telepathy. We do. Yeah. yeah. So so I'm assuming I would have kept a connection with you. So if you tell me what you want to do, I can tell Matisse. Uh, tell tell Matisse to break out and get her stuff now. Matisse, so it's we time. Take these guys down. <laughs> I all of a sudden. How far away from the the other uh, cards? I, I let myself get knocked back and say, she's escaping, help! <laughs> God, she's loose. Roll initiative. <laughs> I'm just making che- Chewbacca analogies. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, Ooh, that's this good. This dice now fails yes. me in an initiative roll. Fuck me too. Dice. Seriously. <laughs> I've been rolling like 18 and higher on that dice all night. Well, it wasn't going to last. The evil empire dice got... As with most things in my life. <laughs> gave me a 20. Hold on, where's my, where's my thing? We don't know. It's in my pants. No, I'm just <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Oh, I mean, didn't want to know. I mean, it is, but yeah. Are any of the guards <laughs> caught? Are any of the guards caught by surprise? Um. I was gonna say, how far away am I? Can I poison spray a couple of them already? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just gonna go into initiative because because as soon as Matisse breaks loose, they're all like, they're all like, quick, get him, or her, sorry, her, get her, get him. For explaining a female, it's it's, it's, it's uh, for explaining a woman, it's hard to uh, remember that sometimes. <laughs> Yes, get it right. There we go. <laughs> She's tall, blue, and beautiful. Strax, 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 Strax is angels. <laughs> and I'm chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> She's full of badassery. What, Strax is chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry or something? <laughs> you yep. call it a strawberry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think of it more as like spicy jalapeno, but okay. Because <laughs> I'm fire. fire. Maybe she's like strawberry jalapeno. Okay, uh, Arvine initiative. Uh, 24. 24. For Arvine. Uh, Strax. For Ive. Five. <laughs> At least you're invisible until you yeah. cast So you Matisse. actually get surprise. 20. Or advantage because you're invisible? I'd get advantage on my first attack. Mm. Mm-hmm. Assuming I'm going to attack. Mm, that's true. He might. And Janus. Out. Six. <laughs> Brother and sister go away. <laughs> the invisible ones are not. <laughs> okay. So the initiative order is going to be Avine and Matisse and the troopers and, well, the, the other troopers, uh, <laughs> and then Janie and then Strax. Okay. So Avine. All right. Uh, so Arvine kind of like faints like she's going to go after Matisse, but instead like grabs out both laser swords and, and basically dives at the captain. Okay. She wants to try to take out the guy who's likely to communicate as quick as possible. Sure. So I'm gonna try a deception to see yeah. if they think you just missed. Is that what you're trying for? Uh, I don't know if I can try deception to see if I just missed, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be wailing on the captain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> take out the laser swords. Um, yeah. Let's now, see now, here. now you can only draw one unless you have that feat. I, I have dual wielder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, swing. laser swords come out. Yeah, swings at the captain. Uh, it's gonna hit for AC fourteen. Uh, AC fourteen. Uh, he's actually not wearing armor, so that hits. Okay. Uh, it's gonna hit for uh, let's see here seven force damage. Seven. Yep. Okay. That that uh, bloody's him. Okay. So then she's going to swing again with extra attack. Oh, that's not so good. Uh, AC, uh, AC 11 to hit. 
I see 11. He, he dodges out of the way. Okay. Uh, one more swing with her offhand. Eesh. Dice failed me. Uh, AC 12? AC <laughs> 12. Dodges out of the way. Okay. Uh, let's see here. You hit the terminals um, next to him. They like spark <laughs> and, 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 and like sparks go flying. Even more pieces come flying off. Okay, all right. Uh, she's going to burn her action a point to take one more attack. Okay. Okay, that's better. AC 20 to hit for 10 force for 10. damage. Yep. Okay, so uh, that, that time you connect with them uh, and he drops. Okay. So yeah, just a whirl of blades, and then she she spins out to the side. Uh, we're oh, not doing flank- uh, Yeah, we're not we're not doing any <laughs> any flanking. So she just kind of spins away. Yeah. To plan her next attack. Okay. So then, uh, Matisse, who uh, we're going to say that you have your sword and your shield. So so you're everything is normal for you. Go ahead and uh, um, there, there's four troopers. Okay. So if you want to uh, attack one the of them, one closest to me. Sure. All right, so, all right, attack number one. All right, so that's going to be 12 to hit. 12 to hit. Uh, The trooper moves out of the way and you miss. Okay, so attack number two. Greg, are you adding that extra for your your magic weapon? Yep. Okay, all right. Okay, this one is 14 to hit. 14, again, dodges out of the way. Okay. Another laser sword, off the wall, off the wall. Spots right. go flying, pieces go off. I'm going to use my my action point for one. For, for an extra attack? Yes. Sure, sure. Okay, let's try this again. One of these is going to land. Ah! <laughs> Oh, was it? It was less. Yeah, it, it's on the side where it's twenty, but it's not Aww. on that side. It's a two. It's a two. Oh <laughs> so, man. Uh, okay, so it kind of like, bo- bounces off I'm his shoulder. Yeah, B- bounces off his shoulder armor. I'm gonna retire that dice for tonight. <laughs> dice jail. Okay, so that trooper that was on you guys is gonna shoot back at you with with okay. disadvantage because he's he's right next to you. Okay. Yep. Ah, oh, shooting weapons at the laser sword expert. Ooh. I can parry some. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's going to hit you with a four and a five, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tanks, Tris. <laughs> doink, doink. <laughs> so so uh, he levels off the blaster and in true trooper fashion. <laughs> I can't even hit you standing right in front of him. <laughs> Shoots oh, the yeah. wall behind you. <laughs> uh, and then let's see. So, so right now there's there's the the two of you dressed as troopers, and there's Matisse who are visible. So, so there's no attacks going at GH88 or Strax. So we'll have another we'll have another one of them, one that's further away from you, Greg. Um, shoot with a regular attack on you. Okay. So regular regular attack, not disadvantage. Hey, that's probably gonna hit. Uh, AC uh, twenty two. Yeah, that will hit. Okay. Uh, but Greg, that's a laser shot. Oh, I can parry that. Yeah. Okay, so, so, you, so you parry with your laser sword. Okay, so Who's I got parry? to read. Read Steve <laughs> Perry. Perry? Where'd Perry go? <laughs> so the force damage from the blaster is seven. Seven. Okay. So you can parry that with your laser sword using the, the feet that I made. Okay. So let me just read it. Uh, laser sword. Da, 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 da. When you're hit by a ranged weapon attack, you can see you can use your reaction to reduce the attack's damage. The damage you take from that attack is reduced by 1d10 plus your dex mod plus your character's level. If a laser's... Defo- that, that, that should be half your level now, Greg. Okay, so... I, I, I modified that, so you, you have to put that in your sheet somewhere. Okay, so it's 1d... 10 plus your dex mod and half your character's level. Yes. Okay. So I'll update Round that. it down. 
Okay, so what do I roll? To yes. Do this? Okay. Yep, that's roll your what? d10. It's, it's uh, roll the d10. Okay. D10. Cool. The ten. And then add your dex mod, and then add three. Okay. Je- Jedi Matisse. Yes. <laughs> In full armor. All right. No Jedi ever wore full armor. Okay. Thanks, Tris. All right, so that's nine plus dex mod, which is plus two, so that is... Eleven. Eleven. Plus high level. Three. That's another three. So fourteen. So fourteen, okay. So you stop all the damage, and so what happens if you reduce the damage to zero? Uh, Let's see. You can redirect the laser by making a ranged weapon attack with proficiency at any target within a range of 40 to 120. Yeah, so you can deflect that laser bolt back okay. at that trooper. So I'd have nice. to make a roll, though, for that. So make an attack roll. Okay. Come on, here we go. <laughs> uh, let's see, so... What's it's... the proficiency? So you add your proficiency uh, bonus to it. No, okay. I'm looking. Okay. And does he do his dex modifier, too? Or uh, Yes, yeah, because you're making yeah. a ranged attack with it, yeah. Okay, so... so... Dex mod. Dex mod plus proficiency plus that 20 roll. Okay, so 4 plus 3, 7. So it's 14. 14. Okay, it just barely misses that guy. Oh, <laughs> man. 14's been and missing. So. I was just <laughs> queuing up a Wilhelm scream, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that trooper does fire at you, and you deflect it. You don't take any damage, and it hits the wall awesome. behind that trooper. Okay, that's cool. Okay. And then, so there's one more shooting at Arvine and one more shooting at Jane. So Arvine, uh, natural one. Okay. Typical trooper fashion. Does he shoot yep. himself in the foot? <laughs> <laughs> Does he shoot his buddy in the back? <laughs> oh, he uh, right. Shooting at Jamie. Uh, AC seven. That misses. <laughs> Hits the wall behind you. <laughs> All right. And then it is uh, Janie's turn. Who okay. wants, to, who wants um, to play tonight? <laughs> who wants to play with JD? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's four of them? There's four of them, yep. Yeah. Oh, there were four in addition to the captain that I already killed? There was yeah. four and there was the captain. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, cool, cool. Well, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to cast level two magic missile. Okay. Which has four darts. Okay. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles. He's actually he's an officer, Kate. Uh, he's not necessarily okay. a captain, but he's an officer. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm sending one at each of them. Okay. Because that sounds fun. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. So we're not allowed to do guy. things just for fun here. D and D is serious business. Bite me. <laughs> first guy. Five max damage. Five. Okay. Takes Second it. Second guy. Five max damage. Five. Takes it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Third guy, four, almost max damage. Okay. Fourth guy, <laughs> three, not three. so much damage. Okay. Imagine we also shoot out, spin around the room, and hit all four <laughs> of those guys. <laughs> they do the spin a that's, that's cool, though. And I do not wild search. <laughs> okay. Aw. No wild search. Damn. <laughs> and then we are at Strax. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Master of the universe. Master of the artifice. Oh, man. I'm going to take a moment to look around. Let's see. I assume we walked in through a door to get into this here? To get into this room? The elevator opened up into this room. Okay, so the elevator opened up straight into this room. Yeah. Okay. I am going to use my turn to jam the elevator. Okay. Uh, I, I will say that you, um, I can just like jam the door open or something like that with the elevator still there, uh, so that, it, so that the elevator can't move. Yeah, that's fine. And I don't really think I want to have you make a roll or anything. So, so yeah, you can, you can, um, you can, uh, you can jam the elevator, but there, I understand what you're trying to do, but that's not the only way into this room. So does that change what you're doing? There, there are there are a couple of other hallways that lead away from this room. We don't know if there's other guards in those hallways. Yeah. 
I mean, there's nobody else around right here. You came to <laughs> the other see, room, right up now. into this room. There's two other hallways that go off. So does that change your decision on what you want to do? Strategy, if you will. Strategy. Your strategy. Strategy. Stretch it on that one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you want to jam no, it, you it doesn't, no, it's three tonight. I still, no, it does, not change, it does not change my strategy because, hey, the less directions we have for people to come in here, the better. Yes. Okay. So, so. you have no, you have no trouble, um, jamming the elevator. So it, so it's not going to move. Is okay. it raspberry? <laughs> <laughs> so we are uh, back up to the initiative order. At the top of the round, uh, round two is Arvine, our okay. Asimar fighter. And then it'll be Matisse, Diva Paladin, the Troopers, Janie, Clash Our Sorceress, and then Strax, Hobgoblin, Artificer. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Has Matisse didn't hit one of them. This, so they, they've all only been damaged by Janie, as far Correct. as I can see. Okay. And I tried really hard to hit them, though. You did. You, you <laughs> gave it a, your all. Okay. No, um, you for that. I will go after one of the ones that it looks like Janie hit a little bit harder with her magic missile. So uh, none oh. of them are bloodied. Yeah. So just 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 give me a number one two three four. Uh one. Okay. Actually, I should uh, say A B C D. That's usually what I do. Okay, so for so number a. W- okay <laughs> A A is gonna a. get hit for AC twenty. Uh, um, for six force damage. Six force damage. Cut that one down. Bam. Yay. Okay. Force damage. All right. So let's see here. Swings over to B. Okay. Uh, with her extra attack. She's going to hit for AC 17. That does it. Uh, oh, okay. For uh, 11 force damage. 11. Oh, Drops 11. That zero, zero. Okay. You drop two of them. And then uh, swirls around and swings into uh, Trooper C with her offhand attack. Okay. Oh, that is probably not going to hit though because that's only going to hit AC 9. 9. 9. Sp- spins out of the way. Nine. Of swing. Okay. All right. So, uh... so that's some freaking Jedi moves right there. Yeah, she's going to kind of spin away and, and, like, stay on the side that blocks them from getting out the hallways in the room, sure. if, if possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then we go on to Matisse, Diva Paladin. All right, we're trying this again. <laughs> uh, Laser sword and shield yes. and right. plate armor. Yeah, you are... Matisse would be really freaking intimidating right now. <laughs> so this one's going to be 20. Do you have your microphone down there? 20. <laughs> 20 will hit. And that's going to be for 9. 9. You drop that trooper with visor sword. Okay. And I turn around and get the other one who's damaged. Okay. And that should be the last one, right? Correct. Okay. And I whiffed. I got a, <laughs> a nine. A nine. Okay. So did you hit hit the, the first time? I, I wasn't paying close attention. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, I, he, he dropped He dropped C. Nice. And just swung on D and, and missed D. Okay. The damage was good that time. So, it would have been 14. So try, try, try to block D. Make sure they can't get out of the room. <laughs> okay. So, so D's going D's gonna to shoot at you. Okay. With disadvantage. All right. Uh, AC seven's probably not going to do it. That's uh, not going to hit. Shoots right past best. you. Uh, then we are on to Janie. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's D that's still up. Yeah, there's just the there's the the one dude. Okay. Yep. Uh, do I have enough? Uh, I have thirty feet of movement. <laughs> Can I get within ten feet of him? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to walk up to within 10 feet of him and blow him a kiss. Okay. Poison spray. Poison oh, spray. Oh, jeez. Oh, you're suddenly liking that one. <laughs> That'll be for... Oh, it, it's a constitution saving throw. Sorry. Constitution save. 24. Ooh. Oh, shit. Well, then I guess it doesn't hit. <laughs> oh, it's a cantrip, so oh, okay, yeah. So, so, so that kind of kind of puffs out, and it kind of disperses around. And then well, down. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can I Darn. use an action point and cast a spell? <laughs> if it's a cantrip, I don't know. Well, I just uh, cast a cantrip though. I don't know. 
Right. Um, yeah. I mean, if you if you what's the rule? If you use a bonus action, a bonus action spell, a bonus action spell, uh, yeah, you can you can cast a cantrip, right? right. Correct. Um, so can you cast a cantrip? But a cantrip? <laughs> nothing says you can't as long as you're uh, as long as your um, uh, homebrewed uh, action point allows her to cast a spell. Yeah, you, you can cast a bonus action spell or a cantrip with a, with a bonus yeah. a, with a, with the action point. So sure, yeah. Sarah, go ahead. Okay, so I could kiss him Oof. again. Yep. <laughs> Give yep. him another kiss. Yeah. Another kiss Constitution a, saving throw, please. Kiss a death. Death. Twenty. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, he's got some good. Uh, I rolled exactly ten too. <laughs> he's like waving. He's like waving his blaster around, trying to fan out <laughs> this big like, cloud. Oh, God, this oh, with your staff. Yes, I. Oh, <laughs> see, you're you're trying to poison him, and I'm trying to, to stab him. So, uh, and then we are uh, to uh, Strax. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the AGD hasn't done anything yet either. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's John's responsibility. The AGD and SEO1 is still in the sack. Huh? Yeah, he's in the back. Yeah, SEO1 is still in the sack. Actually, uh, I don't think GHAD8 needs to become un- invisible at this point. Can one of them? No, in... I'd, I'd rather not drop my invisibility yet if I don't need to. Not on these guys who are apparently dropping quickly. But. I can let SDO one out of the sack, um, and he can take position in the other quarter. That's cool. I, I hadn't really thought okay. about the fact that you're actually keeping your invisibility by not attacking. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Clever. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so right. the guard suddenly sees this robotic dog just appear out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 and, and suddenly start taking position in the other corner, growling at him. Okay. All right. So uh, that's what happens with SDO one. That's cool. <laughs> and there we go. Um, back up to the top of the round, and uh, you can hear somebody coming across the com going, "What's going on down there?" And Arvin, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, Arvin's gonna. Oh, that's a, only twelve I'll seconds. So. Later? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> spin into to D and try to finish him off. So okay. yeah, laser sword. Here we go. Uh, it's gonna hit for AC twenty four. That will hit. Uh, it's gonna mm-hmm. hit for five force damage. Five force damage. Uh, bloodies <laughs> that trooper. Okay. She's that trooper's gonna... a trooper, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you. A- extra now attack. Two or three left. <laughs> <laughs> Ex- extra attack for AC eighteen. Eighteen does it for ten force damage. Ten. You, 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 that drop that. that. You drop that one with the laser sword, uh-huh. and you hear somebody coming ac- across that comm saying, "What's going on down there?" Nothing, sir. Everything's fine, sir. How are you? <laughs> kind of like, like look at Janie and so you think you can talk our way out of this one? <sighs> Nothing, sir. We had a little bit of trouble with the new prisoner, but everything's all set now. <laughs> Who is this? What's your designation? No, no. Fuck. X eight nine two. X eight nine two. Stay where you are. We're gonna we're, we're gonna sending people down. Okay. <laughs> Situation's all handled, sir. <laughs> you don't get any response. Oh fuck. <laughs> okay. Run! Right, so very quickly. All right. So no, no, no. We, you're supposed uh, to blast the calm, then yes. say boring conversation anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have a? Is there like a video monitor on all the cells? Can we can we find the cell where this this lady's being held easily, or do we have to rope uh, the whole? Yes, yes. Block? You, you, you can find you can find the cell that she's in pretty easily. Still have a okay. pole anyway, right? I kind of like mm-hmm. look stare off to nothing. Say, hey, Strax, can you figure out how to open the door of the cell? <laughs> Uh, well, we'll see if we got con- uh, cell controls here. Beep, boop, cell door control. Beep, beep. <laughs> boop, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I seem to kind of uh, manage to figure out these th- these weird uh, talking machines already, as for the most part. <laughs> so, do you want to make a roll on anything? No, it's it's computer? just a simple panel because you know once the person goes in there, n- nobody mm-hmm. should be around here except for the guards. So. Actually, you, you just press the button and it opens. What if we let oh. everybody out? 
and create. Oh, now you're like, talking about like that see, I want to do that to some last chaos. Time. If you can find buttons that'll easily do it, if it's a yes. matter of like minutes of lock picking, there, there's a difference here. If you can do it quickly, let everybody. Uh, Janie runs over and hits buttons. all the buttons. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Self destruct activated. <laughs> See, alarm! 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 Well, the, hold on. So the button is on the cell. So you have to run down okay. the. You have to run down the hallway, hitting the buttons. Okay. Oh, there's no. Yeah, oh, there's well, no remote access to the cells. No. Okay, no. so uh, Ar- Ar- Arvin, Arvin's start, pretty like, fast, and she starts point. running. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so so the two of you are running down running down this corridor, hitting the buttons. Okay, letting people out. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going with them. All right, See, okay. I wanted to do this last time. I did a jailbreak, and you were all like, "No, we can't do that. That's a stupid idea, Strax." No, say Strax, I have good ideas. Janie comes into your head and says, "Shut up, brother. Let's go." <laughs> Okay, so um, you 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 open the cell that has the woman in it, and she is a, a human female with short blonde hair. She's wearing common clothes in muted blue tones, probably in her early thirties. Um, and Strax, you're the one that's opening the door, right? Sure, why not? Okay, he's still invisible. I'm still invisible though, but yeah, true. Okay, so she yeah, just kind of looks up and doesn't know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> um, Does she have cinnamon bun hair? I, I would no. pop my head into the one where she's at and, and talk to her. Well, well hold on, because okay. Strax is the first person. He went okay. over and he right, opened up right. that cell. And yep. then you and Janie start running down yep. the corridor, opening up all the cells. Yep. And then um, there's some, some laser fire that's coming from down the hallway that that both SD-01 was in and the hallway that Arvine vacated when she came down here okay. to open up the cells. So, so, so blaster fire starts coming down those hallways. Um, I think they found our prisoners. <laughs> yeah, is, is SD01 staying in the hallway or uh, well, we're not really in initiative? Uh, uh, right, SD01 right was just kind of taking up our flank. Okay. All right. So, so he's going to come. Uh, I thought you said that he was standing in the other hallway. Well, he was blocking the guy that. Uh, during the fight to, from running down the hallway. We didn't want anybody oh, to get away gotcha. and raise right. the alarm. But once, he, once yeah. we started going down the hallway, he was kind of taking up uh, a position behind us. Okay. All right. So um, so most of the other cells are empty. There's like two other cells that have prisoners in them. Um, one one is one is a dwarf and one is a human. Okay. And, and they kind of come out of the hallway and then um, this laser fire starts to erupt and they go back in their cell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we, uh, <laughs> what's the reaction of the human woman? Like, can I pick up on it from where I'm at? Like, how far away am I when when Strax opens her cell? Uh, well, she she kind of she kind of pokes her head out, and you know she doesn't see Strax, so 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 she pokes her head out, and she says, "What what's going on?" All right, and I kind of are you coming or not? I kind of stop there and lift lift up my helmet far enough to show my face and say, "We can't explain it now. I was supposed to rescue you. We can get out of here, but you got to move." Um, how how are you how are you going to get me out of here? This whole building is full of guards. We we have a ship hovering above the roof, so if we can get to the roof, then we can get lifted off the roof. We we kind of deal with these things as we go. Jam the elevator. Right, so we could get in the elevator and go up. He, he was trying to keep somebody else from calling it away and using it. Yeah. True, so, true. yeah. Okay. I mean, so, you guys, you want to go to the roof, or do we want to try to go down and out? Decision time. Uh, I'd I say the roof. I, I think, think it's the a little roof. bit late. I think it's a little bit late. I think getting get lifted off the roof is good, and I, I radio to Hal and say, "Hey, Hal, we're heading towards the roof. I'm hoping we'll be up there within a couple minutes." On our way, Arvine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so you run down the the cell block away from from where you came in, right? Well, we were going to head back towards the elevator. The elevator that that Strax jammed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's uh, there's there's there are troopers coming down those hallways, firing laser blasters at you. I think okay. we have to go the other way. Yeah. Okay. If okay. it's too many numbers, then we go the other way and try to find another elevator. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't take you very long to find another elevator. Okay. Um, the, um, the troopers do uh, pursue you. Okay. okay. Uh, on that, um, as the on the hallway. Oh wait, crap! That's a level two spell, and I'm out of level two spell slots. Never mind. 
Can we obstruct it with smoke? Is there something Janie can do? I'd be thinking Cast furiously to you. Janie is, Janie is a smoke mage, so... <laughs> yeah. Welcome. <laughs> she has some showy spells. No, I don't. <laughs> she has some fiery best I could spells. Do, best, I, best I could do is set bonfires in the hallway. That I, could, shave. You, I could, she cast could drop a fireball. I drop a fireball. <laughs> Uh, if that's not your only one, I don't know if we'll need one on the rooftop. It's but definitely yeah, not yeah. my only okay, one. Okay, so yeah, drop a fireball on them. That, that'll that slow them down at least. Uh, prisoners. Did what? they other two stay in there? or um, they, they they went back in, but if, if you guys want to tell them that you're leaving, yes, yeah, they, they, they can come out with you, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so, down, so tell them we, 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 we got a ship. We can get you out of here. Come on. Okay. So, so, so they, so they go with you and they kind of, they kind of follow the, um, the woman that you rescued as well. Yeah. Um, okay. and, uh, so, uh, uh, some laser fire comes down the hallway. I'm going to roll randomly to see who's, uh, if anybody's going to get attacked or not. So, um, the people that they can see are one, two, three, and there's actually the three prisoners. So there's six of you. Uh, I try to to put up a place. Where I, I I would get between yeah the, the prisoners too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you want, I I can take them out of the out of the possibility of being hit. If you guys want to try to stand in sure. front of them. Yeah. So okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six for the th- for the three of you. So let's see. Uh, so Matisse. Okay. So uh, an attack. Tokyo one. Uh, yeah. They're they're probably gonna ignore a zero one. Um, okay. but I rolled the twenty two on you again. <laughs> Oh, jeez, oh, Perry. Oh. <laughs> yes, if I can. Uh, it's it's eight force damage. Uh, so you can use your reaction to uh, to parry that with your laser sword. Okay. Let's see. D ten. Okay, so that is going to be. So it's that, my proficiency plus. My... It, it, it's your Dex mod plus half your level, which is three. So Dex okay. mod and, plus three. And your and your proficiency. Okay. So no, no, no. There's, no, there's no proficiency in it's there. It's a D10. It's a D10. Oh, plus the Dex mod. Plus the Dex mod. Oh, okay. Plus, plus half, half your the level. level. Okay. The proficiency oh, is for right. the return. Yeah, okay. Sorry. So I'm it's going to be seven, twelve plus three. Okay. So 15. so you so you take away all the damage, and you can um, try to shoot back at that trooper. Okay. All right. Come on. Uh, let's see, that's gonna miss. It's gonna be like fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> what is it with you and the fourteens tonight? <laughs> <laughs> like that is the number that I've got in the miss. Dice. Hate you. <laughs> you. <laughs> For the AP track. This Crazy whole track. campaign, your attack dice. Greg, shock trooper here. armor. Oh wait, no, no, I miss. Wait, I mismapped it. It's Wait. 16. <gasps> 16, okay. Don't yeah. short yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Where? So, Can you so, guys so, question my mathing? <laughs> <laughs> I had an early day today, damn it. <laughs> okay, sir. We love you anyway. So roll, so roll a D8 and add your dex mod. Uh, okay, so it's going to be 10. 10. Okay, Pshu goes down there and hits and, and, and kills that trooper. Nice. I told you, you they had HP you, 10. <laughs> you use your laser sword to deflect that bolt back and kill that trooper. Um, so then there's, there's one more. Uh, you again. Uh, oh, jeez. So you're out of reactions. AC 21. <laughs> yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> Thanks, Tris. Uh, ooh, for max damage, you take 10 force damage. Ooh. Oh, oh. One of the troopers hit! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> At least you got your temporary hit points from Maze. That's yeah. true. You got that. Yeah. yeah. He got my hair! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, okay, so you guys... So, so, so you, you, you get the prisoners to the elevator, and you start heading up. And, and as the elevator doors are closing, you see that there are troopers coming from that end of the hallway as well. Okay. Um, so so you start... Turn. You start going can up. We barrel roll into the elevator. Tell tracks. Hey, can, we, can you keep them from interfering with this elevator? Uh, I don't well, know if they can stop mm, it. Some I way. can try. That's, yeah. I assume there's a panel of some kind. Can I yeah. just set there's, off a fireball yeah. as the elevator is closing? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you shoot a fireball down the hallway towards the largest concentration of troopers. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a it, it it's a deck save. <laughs> it's a deck save. Okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll do uh, I'll do six deck saves. What did I do with all my d sixes? Well, it may not bother. It may not matter depending on how much damage you do, because even half damage. True. Yeah. How much damage this do you do? True. Hold on. I have to get eight d sixes out. Hold on. How much on. damage do you do? How much damage you do? Oh, that's terrible. How much damage do you do? <laughs> oh, I'm dropping a d sixes everywhere. <laughs> I pierced the toast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Here we go. <laughs> Purple and teal, let's go. All right, so six, twelve, <laughs> fifteen, twenty, okay. twenty-five. This big explosion <laughs> burns oh, up shit. all these surprise shock troopers. Oh shit! Had a go, baby. Make sure there's nobody following us. Nice. Did you wild search? <laughs> I don't know yet. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that could uh, be problematic. In a confined space. Oh, too. crap. I rolled a one. Oh, uh, no. Wild search. Oh, oh, okay, no. so, so the door oh, of the, no. so the, the elevator closes, and you see Janie's magical magic energy trying to build up inside and I try to, the, I try to like shelter the woman with the blonde hair and get her against the wall. <laughs> Look out! Wait, that, see, the problem is I can't roll my, ooh, my, big, my D100 in this tiny tray. You need a bigger <laughs> dice tray for your D100. John no. can make you one. Magical energy. Then it rolls off the table! No. Magical but energy you, crackling you all around like Jenny. Like a big square one. <laughs> Okay, it is an 18. Okay. It could change if Which is... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what are you turning into? Are you ready for this? Sure. No. You grow a long beard made of feathers. <laughs> that remains until you sneeze, at which point the feathers explode out from your face. <laughs> so basically your helmet's there and the beard comes out from under your helmet. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, this beard of feathers comes out from underneath her helmet. <laughs> I look like a freaking peacock. <laughs> While we're in the elevator, I'm kind of like, oh, let, let's tuck that into your, your uniform there. <laughs> oh, so the reason they freed prisoners are confused. <laughs> At least it wasn't a fireball. <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad because we're in a confined space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you you would have killed all our prisoners. <laughs> and yeah. us. Well, I would have come back, so No, we, we wouldn't get killed at this point by a fireball. But is anyway. like I would have survived. Okay. So so you guys you guys get up to the roof. Okay. And you exit the elevator and um you see that there is a uh firefight going on between the the crew of the Star Runner and some of the some some shock troopers that are up there on the roof. Oh, oh shit. P- people are firing Fireball. back and forth because because the, the, the ship the ship flew over and came down really close to the roof, and apparently these people did not like that, so they started okay. firing and there's there's like this firefight going on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Try to take um, out the troopers that are threatening the crew uh, while we get to uh, you know ladder or whatever to get onto the ship as quick as possible. Burning hands. <laughs> <laughs> Arvine just t- doesn't hesitate. Laser sword. She's off to cut as many yeah. down as she can on her way. Matisse is out. Tells the prisoners, follow us. Stay out of danger. Okay, Matisse so... is jamming the elevator. <laughs> or, or Strax, Strax is jamming the elevator. Okay. Okay. Still Robert invisible, too. So let's, Still uh, invisible. So let's, so let's, 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 uh, let's roll another initiative. Okay. okay. I don't know where one of my pink dice went. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like envisioning our motley crew in an elevator with like happy little elevator music too. Do I choose this point to sneeze to confuse them? <laughs> true. <laughs> the, family, the Family Guy episode when they had the elevator um, Imperial March going, <laughs> and when they're in the start the. Death Star Mall. <laughs> oh dear yeah. Lord! Oh man! 
<sighs> what are we doing? Rolling initiative? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've been laughing so hard my head is dizzy. Oh no. All right, so uh, that's a little better. Arvine. 19. 19. I hope my guests aren't trying to sleep. Six. (laughs) (laughs) And Matisse. 17. And Jamie. 15. Okay, so we have Arvine, Matisse, Janie, Strax, Troopers. Okay. And uh, so right now, the the section the um, the section of the battle that you guys are dealing with is going to be six troopers. Okay. okay. So the, so there's still like a larger fight going on with people on the Star Runner shooting laser weapons and like crossbows and arrows and things like that <laughs> down onto the troopers that are on the roof, and you guys are engaging. You're trying to get over. There is a ladder hanging down from from the Star Runner. And you're trying to get over and get onto that ladder, and you have to make your way through these six troopers. So we're going to start with Arvine. Okay. Shocking. All right. So yeah, she'll rush over to the, her first trooper. That All right, trooper A. Across. Yeah, trooper A. Laser sword. <clears throat> a. Wow. A. Uh, that will be a critical. She criticals on 19s and 20s now. Yay. Nice. Nice. Laser right. sword feet. Go laser so, sword custom feet. For the win. Where's my other D8? Let's do that one, sure. Shiny. All right, so that's uh, overkill, I'm guessing. Uh, 11, 15 force damage. 15 force damage. Oh, cut that one down. Okay, and then she's on to the next one. Trooper B. That is going to be at AC 16 to hit. SMR fighter, wrecking base with the laser swords. Yeah, so AC 16 yep. hit, hits for 11 force damage. 11. Drop that trooper as well. Okay, and then with there's, her there's off... There's a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> 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 uh, with her offhand attack, she swings on to the third trooper C. Start running through. Uh, hit hits this one, spin. Hit that a- one, spin. Hit the third one. Yeah, AC 19. Yep. Play some for the rest of us. going to hit for uh, uh, only eight force damage. Eight. <laughs> That one somehow survived. <laughs> it will survive. There's a big wound on the side <laughs> of that trooper. Okay. Yeah, okay. She, yeah. Squares so that was up. our Asimar yeah. fighter, Matisse, Diva Paladin. All right. So, so I, I assume you're all moving together as a group, so you get up onto, uh, onto uh, Trooper C. Yep. <sighs> 11. 11. 11 to hit. Dodges out of the way. All right. Holding yeah. onto the wound. Spins Let's out of the way of your, of your laser sword. Second attack. Okay, and that is going to be 16 to hit. That will hit. For right. a, okay. 11. 11. Nice. 11. <laughs> Over kit. Drop that one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your two attacks, right? Yes. Okay. Nice job, and uh, Janie, Clash Star, Sorceress. How many are left? Three. Are they in a 15-foot cone? Sure. <laughs> sure. <coughs> Dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw <laughs> for D, E, and F. Fiwa. Fiwa. Or Fiwa. Ouch, hot. Three and the two probably fail. Uh, the 15 probably makes it. What's the DC? Uh, it is a 14. However... I rolled 21 for the hit dice. You burn them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three three mellow screams. Very, very badly burned. <laughs> There's a little yeah. on the crispy side. We brought our A game to the combat. So, so you make it over to the you make it over the ladder. And, and I go ahead. I, I guess I'm dropping invisibility at this point. <laughs> okay. All right. You, you guys, you guys get onto the ladder, and, and as the, as the last of you is getting on the ladder, the ship starts to pull away, um, and some more troopers come out and they start firing, but to really no avail. So um, the, the the Star Runner uh, picks up speed and uh, takes off into the atmosphere. Um, they they. Just basically book it, book it as, as fast as they can. 
Oh, I didn't check and see if I wild. Oh, did you wild search on that one? Well, I rolled a 20. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so you guys start basically booking it uh, away from from the the um, from the surface, and um, you guys do make it out. You're, you're, you're not followed. Um, you guys make it back out into wild space. Uh, there. I don't think that could have gone much better. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> Just so you're aware, th- th- there was there was a trash compactor option. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I did write that in there. Oh man! Uh, we didn't Sorry. discover. We discover. always foil your Star Wars plans. We didn't That's talk. What are you talking about? That was great. That that was great. That was really cool. I was pretty much right out of the. It movie. worked out. <laughs> we yeah, didn't right, encounter was, Meg was... in the garbage scan. No, no, no. Yeah. See, nobody, no, awesome. nobody no, no, told me cool. that I was short for a shock trooper, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, he's I only did, like five foot two. <laughs> I, I actually, I think that I have her. Did I have her saying that in there? Oh, is available. I, I feel like I feel like I may have written that in there somewhere. Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, but some weird invisible hobgoblin letter. Oh yes, I did. I did have it written there. It said, "Aren't you a little short for a shock trooper?" I had that written right there. Uh, <laughs> and then the, the, the invisible just... guy went and opened up the door. And she's like, "What? She's like, what is happening?" <laughs> Uh, the woman that you rescued. Yeah, I mean, uh, Arvine would want to talk to her right away. Uh, so, uh, her name is Yarina, and she says that her home world uh, is a planet called uh, Shartor, and the Illithid Empire conquered um, her world, and uh, basically, um, anyone that didn't agree to their rule were basically put in, in prison facilities, and she had led a rebellion against the Illithid Empire that were occupying her planet. Um, and they they basically tracked her like halfway across the galaxy before recapturing her and imprisoning her there on that planet. Okay. And you know she's basically making it her she's making it her goal to try to oppose the Illithid Empire wherever possible. So she's um, she she's basically looking to continue her rebellion against the Illithid Empire, although. From the perspective of, of you guys, of your party and the rock, this is the first you've ever even heard of any of this. This is the first you've ever encountered this. So you don't you don't believe that the Illithid Empire is um, anywhere near the area of space that the Rock of Brawl is in, at least not yet. Mm-hmm. Um, dun, dun, dun. Probably want to make some inquiries towards it when we get back to the rock anyway. Sure. He'd sure. also want to find out about the other prisoners that we that we got with us, so <laughs> Danny will talk to them. <laughs> do they want to go back to the rock, or do they want to be dropped off somewhere along the way? They need, um, they're they're, they're they all they fine with new... going back to the rock. I mean, I mean, the other two prisoners. Do they need some new weapons or uh, pots and pans. I, mean, I can help them out with them. Yeah. <laughs> they got any cash Buy on things them? from us. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the other two prisoners were people who basically um, violated, uh, and not they didn't lead a rebellion like this woman, uh, like, like Irina, mm-hmm. but. Uh, but they were on imperial occupied planets and and they basically did not fall in line and so they were mm-hmm. taken to this uh, prison facility mm-hmm. cool so so after you after you've talked with them and figure all this out uh then we can end and we can continue as you guys are returning to the rock um next time so Woo-hoo. all right that works yay nice. that was really cool we actually had a plan actually come work Come Correctly. to fruition, yeah. and I'm a little bit, and that makes me a little bit scared. <laughs> yeah. I've never in my life have rolled so many 14s to walk back. <laughs> hey, don't forget, you guys snuck around a pyramid ship dressed as mummies. <laughs> yeah, yes. true. Did. That, plan, that, that plan also worked. My it big, get to blow up the pyramid so well ship. Strax, I'm still though, disappointed. He about almost that. I have a feeling yeah, that, that pyramid died. ship is going to come back to bite yeah. us in the butt. I, I have big bad vibes from the pyramid ship. So you didn't, didn't destroy Maybe we can set the pyramid ship onto the elephants. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. We just we just stuck it to uh, Matisse's old mob boss a second time <laughs> now, so that that's not going to go well either. <laughs> so uh, let's say good night to the listeners. Good night, everyone. Good night, We love you. I don't know why I'm Thank wait. you for listening. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> If you enjoyed
enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Our social media links, plus additional content, can be found on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Please tell your friends about Knights of Roleplay, and adventuring podcast, and spread the word through social media. Your help and support are greatly appreciated. <laughs>